Hey board game maniacs, Maniac Rob here to bring you another exciting battle report. I'm excited for this because it has two of my favorite things into it. Number one has to do with zombies. Ooh. And number two, it has to do with a video game that I loved when I was younger and I used to play it all the time. What I'm talking about is Steam Forged Games Resident Evil 2 the board game. That's right, not the video game, the board game. This was released recently. I don't know exactly when this video is going to be released, but it's within a month or two. It may be within a couple of weeks or two. I don't know, but it is very recent anyhow. And I did an unboxing on the channel. If you are never caught the unboxing to find out what is exactly in the box, find the, uh, the what's in the box, the Resident Evil 2 board game, and click on it and watch to see all the contents of the core game for the core box set. In this one though, I'm going to be using the expansion boxes too as well, but we are going to start playing right from the very first mission in the rulebook and then going from there to the other scenarios as the videos progress on our channel. So let's go to the game. Let's look how I got it set up. Let's look at what characters I picked and let's start killing some zombies! This is the first scenario that we are playing. Again, this is the very first time I've played this game. I did the unboxing. I didn't even really look at the rules too much in detail after doing the unboxing. So if there are rule mistakes, just comment down below if you played this game and let me know what they are and refer to a page number and timestamp. Thank you very much to all the viewers out there that have been doing this for other videos because Starting out with new board games or even tabletop games, you're bound to make mistakes. But the way you learn is by reviewing your mistakes, looking in the rule book, but also learning from other players. So because of that, I thank all of you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for that, because without you, it would take me longer and longer to learn these rules. So thank you very much. Keep the comments coming because I love them all. The name of this scenario is Scenario 1A, Brief, Getting to the Police Department. So pretty much what it is is the hero characters have went to Raccoon City and they discovered that it was overrun to the point that, you know, they don't feel safe. So they're going to have to make it to the Raccoon City Police Department because if they do that, then, you know, they may find some refuge, some more police officer officers or weapons and so have you to help you find and protect yourself and try to survive in this zombie infested city of Raccoon City. This is the look of the map of how you set it up. Now I have to say, first off from the get-go, this setup for the game did not take long at all and it was super, super easy to do because you don't have to worry about what images are on the tiles. You just, what I do is I count the squares and then I know what kind of tiles to use. And then the black things are the doors. You also see things such as this here. These are little partitions into rooms and you just got the little black cardboard partitions and you place them there. Again, this is all referred to into the unboxing video that I did onto the channel. Go check it out if you're not sure about that. But anyhow, moving on. This is the map and this is the RP RPD entrance. So this is Raccoon Police Department entrance. So this is kind of like in the alleyways and in abandoned buildings and everything else that is in Raccoon City that we're making our way to get to Raccoon City Police Department so that we can get in there and try to hopefully find more survivors and more people to help us out. That's pretty much that simple. You can see here all these red circles. Get a little closer here. These are where you would place your zombies. And then you also have like a two and a one. Now, this is exactly where you would start your starting characters or your characters would start at. So one character would go to number one and one character number two. Now I am playing a solo mission, but sometimes during some of the scenarios, it tells you that you need more than one survivor or more than one character to play. But because we're playing solo, you control both of them. 
this player goes this game goes from one player to four players so everybody is just aware of that too as well and you can see here they have like an a here and a b these are equipment decks so if you go here and you pick it up then you're going to pick up from equipment deck a or equipment deck b and so on with every scenario that you play it tells it gives you the briefing all the information shows you how to set it up where to place everything and also it tells you if you look down here what to put in item deck a item deck b and what goes into the tension deck so there's no question whatsoever everything is laid out for you clearly so that you can just set it up and that is what i did is i set it up according to this map you can see i have everything everything set up and it does reflect the map exactly so you can see I have my doors here. I have my zombies where they go. I got my items from item deck A, B, and A, and A2 as well. The entrance to the Raccoon City Police Department. You have zombies where they all go on the board. I have my two characters set up. So the two characters that I'm choosing for this, it don't tell you in the scenario that you have to use this character or that character. Again. I am playing a solo campaign, that's right. Not a solo mission, but every mission can be played as in like a one-off or you can combine them and link them all together to make a campaign. What I'm going to try to do is continuing playing this to get as many campaign missions in as I can. That's right, it's gonna be very fun. The game looks very promising. I hope, I hope, I hope that I'm going to survive, or the survivors is going to survive. But let's go in a closer look and see who I picked. For the entire scenario campaign missions, I'm going to try to stick with none other than Leon S. Kennedy. That's right, and if you know the game, you know exactly who he is. So, let's look at his card in a little more detail here. So, defense to evade is two dice, Eight inventory, uh, he's able to use a handgun, a shotgun, and a magnum. Now also he has a little bit of special text here, which is his special abilities, and it states, once per activation, Leon may use an item while one or more enemies are in his square without making an evade roll. I'll explain this as we go along and I find it in the book because again, first time playing this game, and hopefully we're not going to make too many rolls mistakes. Also you see here is the health meter for each character. It's the same. You can see this here. You just take your card and you place it onto your health meter just like this for whatever character you're going to play. So you have fine. You're still fine. Caution. You're turning into amber and then danger. And then once you hit here, if you go one more step, then you are pretty much passed out or dead. For starting equipment, it does say in the, in the rule book for this starting scenario, is each of them starts with a handgun and knife, first aid spray, and you have your handgun ammunition here. Now, how much ammunition does a handgun have, would you say? Well, for this game here, I'm just moving it up here. It should have been set already, but I bumped it. You can see 15. So it's 15, and how do I know that? So you look at the, the handgun right here, and at the upper corner, it got 15 ammunition just right there. A little bit more in detail about this handgun card. You have a couple of symbols up top here. So the first one is for target is the line of sight. So that means that as long as you can draw a line and it don't get interrupted by other obstacles, no matter how far away you are, you got line of sight. Next thing is how many shots. It's one blue die, but what you can do, because it has this here uh, rapid fire icon, it got three bullets, you can spend up to three bullets to shoot with this gun for your action. Now, the next two that's here, I'm kind of get both in, in shot here. We'll move it over a bit. So if I was to shoot, I can move this down by three to shoot three blue die to try to hit because it is... Uh, multi-shot weapon and you can see there's two other icons one single hit icon and a double so 
If you roll your blue die and you only got this result, or three of the same results, you can't add them up. It just means that you're going to be able to push them that many results away one square. If, however, you roll and it has two hit marks onto it, such as this one, that means whoever you're shooting takes one wound for every two hit marks. So again, you don't add them up. You actually have to have that symbol to get the hit mark. If you only had three single ones, you're gonna push them back three of these. For the knife, now, it has infinite ammo because you don't reload a knife. It has one space for the line, for the uh, spaces away, one blue die, and one symbol, you push them two symbols, it's one wound with the knife. And this symbol down here is, means that anybody can use this knife, it's not character specific. This here don't have a character specific, it just means, again, that it's a rapid fire. For the first aid spray, I'm just trying to get the, get it so it's not so shiny. Discard this card to heal this character or another character in the same or adjacent space by three levels or to resuscitate or an unconscious character. So as I said before, when this falls up here, you can either be unconscious or dead. Where I'm playing a solo mission, if this falls off, it's gonna be pretty bad because that means that we just die. Let us look at the Leon miniature right here. Now, for the Kickstarter, what, uh, what they did is they pretty much released for extra additives, uh, other sculpts. Now, I kind of got them mixed up. Leon, this could be the additive for one of the expansions or it could be the standard, I cannot remember. But just go back to the unboxing video of the core game and you'll see which one he is. And again, as a reminder, I have to keep saying this, and that simply is, is that there are gonna be some cards possibly played in here or characters that are from the expansion box that you don't get in the core. Next character I picked is Claire Redfield. So she's able to use the handgun, the crossbow, and the grenade launcher. Let me get a little closer there to show you. And for Claire's special character abilities, made in heaven. Once per scenario, that's right, per scenario, Claire may spend an action to heal another character on the same tile by two levels. Ooh, that could be really good, really handy. And again, two evade dice and eight for her backpack that she can hold. She has exactly the same equipment as what Leon does to start off, and you can see the dial right there. Her starting position is right here, and again, this could be the advanced scope. I don't know, I can't remember. I just picked it because she looks really cool, even when it's not painted. Let's take a look at the, the zombies, or the creatures being used on this game. So this is your starter game. They didn't want to throw too many bad guys at you or too many different powered, overpowered types of zombies. So these are all just your standard zombies. They just have two or three different sculpt looks, just to let you know, but this is the zombie card, so let's take a little quick peek. So you can see here, this is the threat level. I'm not getting into the threat level yet until we actually come up against it in either this scenario or the next or what have you. Range is one, they have one health. Now. Their special ability is a suicide lunge. This attack cannot be evaded. After resolving the attack, the zombie is killed. Just to uh, recheck this, now that number one that's in the middle, that is the movement value, so it can move up to one space, not how much of a range it has. Now going on with the zombie here, um, you can see the line of sight is zero, so to be able to attack, it has to be in the same square as a character, and it is a bite mark, because you can see the second one down here, it's got a symbol of a head with his mouth open, and it create one wound. Now if you look over here too as well, suicide lunge. The zombie performs a move reaction and attacks using the following profile. So it does have range of one away now if it does the suicide lunge, and it takes one wound if it bites you. Ooh boy. Let's go kill some zombies. You can see here I have deck B according to the scenario. It's only one card. It tells you what card it is. 
uh, deck A for your inventory. You can see the A there. And then these ones here is your tension deck. And it tells you exactly what ones to put in and shuffle them up and mix them so that you don't know what's gonna come up first. Because we are going to be playing or trying to play the campaign mode, this is the campaign tracker. Where did I get this? It's in the back of the one of the books, so you just can photocopy, because it does say down here, in the small little text, it says, permission granted to photocopy this page for personal use only, Steamforge Games. So you print them off, and you can use them to keep track of your characters, an ammunition track, item cards, and your special notes. And there I have my dice laid out. Again, watch the unboxing video. I do explain about these dice a little bit more in detail, but you will see them as we play this game. And that is it. We are ready to rock and kill zombies. One little quick reminder, if you like this video and you want to see more such as for Resident Evil or any other game, just go to our YouTube channel, go to our Twitch channel, click on the subscribe button and on YouTube, click on the bell notification, get notified for other videos that are gonna be up and available to view on our channel. And you know, share it, comment, and just let you know we do live streamings and we do giveaways on our channel too as well. So just keep an eye out for them too as well because it is very, very fun to watch these videos. Let's go on with this battle. Alrighty, so in Resident Evil 2, the board game, I'm just reading said the book, so we're on the same page here. Players takes take turns activating their character, moving clockwise around the table. And, well, with, with the game, now, characters have, which is, it's broken up into different phases that are action phase, reaction phase, and tension phase. So there's three phases to this game per round. So with the action phase, you can either move, open and close doors, search, trade, use items, or attack. Now, during the player's action phase, they get to perform four actions, and they can repeat the same action four times if they want. It's not a big deal. It just, that's it, it's just done. It is on, I'm starting off with Leon. Now, he already has line of sight onto this walker because you can draw a straight line there's nothing in the way from, or nothing stopping him from hitting this zombie. And he's going to do it with his gun first. That's right, he's going to use his handgun. And it has a rate of fire of one, but again, you can change that. You can shoot up to three times because it is a rapid fire weapon as shown on the card that I showed previously. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the three blue dice, and I'm going to use my handgun ammunition one, which is right here, and I'm gonna drop this down, so 15, 14, 13. So that's three shells, it's not even in focus. There we go, so I drop that down because I'm using the three blue die, and I'm going to try to shoot that zombie, and hopefully I can kill him. When making an attack, this is what it tells me in the book. So declare the target model and which weapon is being used, which you did. I'm shooting that walker that was over there and I'm shooting with my handgun. Now, when I do that, I have to drop the handgun ammo down the way it's supposed to go. And then I roll. Now, reduce the volume of ammunition by one or by as many as you're going to use. Roll the attack dice indicated if at least there's one again. Now, if it has a one hit, it's going to push in one space. If it has two hits, it's going to, you know, it's going to at least do one wound. And just to remind everybody, so that is, if I roll one of these, it's going to push them for every one of these I roll, it pushes one space. For every one of these I roll, it's a wound. That is, it's pretty simple. Here goes. Three, come on baby. All right, so these do nothing because they are for avoidance, but I hit one. So that means I don't wound the zombie, I push him back one spot. 
So boom. Pew pew. Or just pew because I only hit him once. So he moves back one spot. Now that is the first action I did. And when I do the first action, what happens is it's going to create noise. And if it creates noise, then any other zombie, if there was more zombies in this tile, they're going to be able to react and move. And that means too as well is any linking tiles. And I'm not, I, you can't see that, so let's just move the camera here just slightly. So what that means is this are li these are linking tiles, but this door is not open, so zombies would not be able to move through. And in the door, in the action phase, you could open and close doors, so keep that in mind. But if there's linking tiles and this door is open, that zombie's gonna react by moving out to the, where the noise has originated from. Keep that in mind. As we play along, you know, you'll pick up on the rules as well as I will. But that was my first action. Second action, I still got line of sight, I'm gonna shoot again. For me to shoot this zombie again, I'm down to 13 for ammo. I'm just going to shoot him for two. So it drops me down to 11 now. So I get rid of one of my blue die and I only get two. Because remember, it is rapid fire, this handgun. I need to get a wound result to kill him. That's what I get. An evade and one hit. So therefore, because I hit him again, <sighs> but I only hit him to push him. Because of a push. Now, this zombie can't get pushed this way because there's nothing there. But however, even though I did hit him and push him, he's, it don't really make sense, but it does say in the book, he's going there. And that is my second action. I got two more actions left. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is probably just move up my two for my next two actions for Leon. So he's going to go one, two. That's my four actions done. Just like that. Now that may be bad where I'm at. We will see, won't we? This is very interesting. Now, just reading this at the book, it's on page 12. It states, once a character has completed their action phase, not every character, once per character has completed their action phase, the controlling player must perform a reaction for all the enemies which are on the same tile as the active character or on a linked tile, as I explained before. Linked tiles are tiles connected to the active character's tile via one or more open doors. Enemy reactions should be resolved one at a time in an order chosen by the active character controlling player. Now, this is in the reaction phase, but so pretty much the way the order is, is that Leon's, Leon just went and then any zombies in the tile will do the reaction phase. Then after that, it's going to be Claire's turn to do an act, their actions, and then it's going to be the zombies that are gonna do the reaction. So that's pretty much what that is, and now it's on to the zombies reaction phase. Taking another look at the zombie. Now again, they have an attack of zero or range of zero. They have to be in the same square, but they do have a movement of one. And what I'm understanding from this is if they move one, they can do the special ability, which is the suicide lunge. The zombie performs a move reaction and attacks using the following profile. So it has a range of one and it can attack the, well, Leon, the character. This, I might have not have moved Leon in the best place because I think Leon's going to take a hit. If we look at Leon's card, you can see up here it has the two with the arrows. That is the amount of blue dice that he gets to roll to try to evade that attack if the zombie is going to attack him. And that's exactly what's going to happen in this turn, is that zombie's going to come up and attack poor Leon. The reaction. The reaction phase for the zombie. Reaction. Reaction phase. So, has a movement of one. And because it is in range, now it can do which is called a suicide lunge. So it is going to try to bite Leon for... One wound, but Leon gets to roll two blue die to try to evade. Now again, these are standard zombies, so they are a level one evade. 
two blue die. Now the level one, I'll explain. I did this in the unboxing video, but I will explain it because I think it's very important. So there's different levels of evade onto the dice. So you had the first blue arrow, which is right here. That is a level one evade. So if I roll this, I successfully able to evade the zombie. This is a level two. So some of the enemies in the game are a level two and you would have to roll this successfully evade a level two. If you rolled a level one on a level two monster, then the evade would not have succeeded. And you also get, which is a level three. So if you're fighting like a boss, a level three, and you don't roll this type of evade, but you roll the other ones, you're still gonna get hit. So that just explains it about for the uh, levels for the evasion. So Leon, two blue dice, I have to at least evade once. And he did. He evaded once. Good job, Leon, good job. Since we're on to the evade for the, the reaction phase for that zombie, I just want to touch upon a little bit more that's into the rule book. So just say for instance there were two zombies in the same square as Leon. And so he would pick one to be able to evade it. And if he rolled, and where he rolled this here, it still wouldn't be successful. And the reason for that being, it, it's like the zombies get helped by his buddy zombie that's in it. So he would have to actually roll either this, which is a level three, or a level two, which I can't seem to follow, there it is, or a level two to be able to successfully evade. Now, that's really interesting. And just to continue on with this evading thing, if there was one walker, just say that walker that I successfully was able to evade was in the square with Leon, after performing an evade test, I'm just reading it in the book here, to successfully evade the attack, the player must roll at least one level one, level two, or level three. And again, this is talking about just that zombie specifically. If an evade roll fails, the character is hit and suffers the effect listed on the enemy attack profile. Therefore, Leon would have got one wound, so his health would have been dropped down by one. After resolving these effects, if the attacking enemy is in the same square as its target, the target character may push the enemy, move it to an adjacent square. So now if Leon failed this evade and it was in the same square, as it said, Leon would still be able to push the zombie by one square adjacent. So that ends Leon's activation phase. So now we are on to Claire's activation phase. And again, she has the, the handgun, which is a line of sight. She just has to be in a simple line of sight. But where she is now, she can't go this way because this is a wall. It's a black line, so it's a wall. The only way she can do it is this way. And she has four actions just like Leon does. So for Claire, one action right there. Move the camera a little bit. Second action, right there. And for her third action, she's gonna try to do a pot shot into this zombie, which is right here. I'm kinda looking through the viewfinder so it's harder. Now, for Claire to shoot this, again, she has a handgun or she could try to move all the way up and try to knife, but Claire wants to try to take a pot shot too as well. So. She's gonna do the same thing, I think, which is going to, she's only gonna drop down the two. She only used two blue die to shoot this time because she wants to try to conserve her ammo a little more than what Leon did. Let's go to rolling dice box and see if she is going to whack him and kill him or her. All right, two dice for Claire. She gets, ooh, 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 look at that. You know what that means? Because of the, the card profile for the handgun, she rolled the two hits, it takes one wound, and the basic zombie only has one health. So that means Claire has just headshot it. Kaboom! That zombie. She's toast and gone off of the board, just like that. So that was one, two, shoot for her third and her fourth one is going to be to move up here 
That is it for Claire's four actions. Now, we are on to the reaction phase, but that zombie is nowhere there. But if you look at here, let me move the camera a bit. There we go. There, there already are two other walkers right here, or zombies. So because there's two other zombies right here, and this tile, it, it's not connected. Whoops. Because of the black line, it's a wall. But if that wall was not there, then on the reaction phase, these zombies would all move their movement value of one. But because they're not in the same area, they're not gonna move. Claire can't go in here because there's a wall here. Claire has to actually go this way and she can make it out here or she can work her way up because that might be something good in the item deck there or this is item deck A. So right now nothing else can be done with the zombies because of the fact is that there's none that are in line of sight of Claire because this door is closed. I don't know if you can see on camera. This door is closed, so there's no line of sight. And this here is a wall, so no line of sight. So therefore, Claire is safe for now. She was a smart cookie. For the next phase, the third and final phase of the round, it's called the tension phase. And this is where the controlling player, and in this instance, it is Leon who's a controlling player, pulls a card from the tension deck and reads it and resolves the text. Now, if for any chance it, they can't resolve the text because, you know, if it says another uh, zombie spawns and there's no more zombies left, you're gonna draw two more of these cards. So just be aware of that. So it makes things a little bit more difficult. Also, on top of that, just to mention, you know, in the book it did say that when you first open these cards, you don't wanna shuffle them for the very first scenario because the, tensions, the tension deck is already set up for the first scenario, but I shuffled them, and according to, I put in the cards what's supposed to be there and only those cards. So this is a little different than what it said in the book so everybody is aware of. Anyhow, we're gonna pull this first card. And it is green, all clear. This is good. Somewhere in the darkness, fingernails scratch against a glass pane. The urgency of the sound matching your racing pulse. That's it. It's all clear. Nothing happened because we are just all clear. Now you can see here there's these uh, numbers and letters that are on the bottom. This means that this here is meant for these types of scenarios. So this you can play from scenario 1A all the way up to scenario 8A. You can put that in. So that's a good reference to as well, but nothing happens. So therefore, we are in the clear and we're on to round two. For round two, what is Leon going to do? I wonder why. Now, if Leon stays there and he shoots, he's just, he's not gonna be really successful because the fact is, is that he's just gonna be in trouble. But remember, he has four. Now, I don't want him to shoot with his gun because he's already at his ammunition level is down to 11. Now, onto the knife card, he has actually a range of one that he can he can try to stab. So I'm thinking that's what Leon's gonna do. So he's going to take pull this knife out because it is one space away, and he's gonna try to jam that knife up into the zombie's skull to kill him. So let's go to the dice rolling box and see if he's able to do that. One blue die. Come on, Leon, you can do this. Oh, look at that. Bam! Leon successfully slammed his knife through the walker skull, the zombie skull, just a like, clunk. You can hear the bones just spreading as the knife blade enters his head and pierces his brain and kills that zombie. He's done. Good job, Leon. That was only your first action. You get three more actions left. But what are you going to do? I know what you're going to do. You are going to go two actions, three actions. Now he has a choice. Actually, you don't have a choice because there's a wall down here. It's off camera, so back here there's a wall. He can't go through a wall. He's not a ghost. He can't cut the wall down. So for his third action, he's going to just open the door. And all you do for that is, um, board game a bit, 
is just flip it over and that's open. So that's his four actions just like that. Now we are into the reaction phase, but as you see, there's no zombies in here. This is a wall, that's a wall, and there's none in here, and that door is closed anyhow, so there's nothing that the zombies can do for the reaction. When I, I say that's a wall, that's why I forgot to move the camera to show you, but anyhow, wall, wall, no zombies are in this, so there's no reaction for the zombies for this case. And because he used the knife, it didn't create any noise anyhow, so he just stuck it, except for the cracking of the bones into the skull of the zombie. Ooh! It's so now we're on to Claire. Claire has her four actions that she can do as well. So Claire is going to go one action, two action, and she's going to pick up the shiny object for number three. And that shiny object if you look close enough, I don't know if I can get it in focus, but we'll try here. Come on, camera. There you go. You can see there's a glimp, glint, glimpse, blah, I can't talk today, of an A. So therefore, I go to the item stack A and pull a card. I wonder what she's going to get. Item stack A for Claire. It is going to be green herbs. Ooh. So discard this card to heal this character or another character in the same or adjacent square one level. Kind of off camera there. So that's pretty good for Claire because then she can heal herself or somebody who's in the same square, but nobody has took any wounds yet. So we're pretty good still. Claire still has one more action and she is going to line herself up for the door. So she is staying Actually, I don't think that's a good idea for Claire to do because if you notice these like radioactive icons that are all riddled throughout the board, that is a zombie spawn point. So a zombie could potentially spawn in a square. But you know what? This is the first game I got to learn. So you know what? Claire got to learn from her mistakes too. So she's staying right there. That is her last action. Now we're going on to the tension phase. I just want to take a quick note here too as well, is during the reaction phase now, um, the walkers, or the zombies, I'm keeping on saying walkers because I've been playing a lot of Walking Dead All at War, which is another zombie game. In any case, the zombies in the reaction phase, I'm just kind of reading through this here, and it tells me that the only zombies that will move is once all enemies on the same and linked tiles have performed a reaction, move on to the next phase. So it's only ones that are linked or on the same tile get to react. All the other zombies that are not on the same tile, they don't do nothing because they're not going to move. They can't hear anything because they're not in line of sight, they're not in earshot. So therefore, they just stay where they are. If I'm reading this correctly in the book, if I am not, please timestamp this video, comment down below if you played this before and let me know if I'm playing it wrong. Thank you. We got to draw a tension card from the tension deck now. Let's see what it is. This again is another all clear. I'm just going to read this off camera here. It says somewhere in the darkness, fingernail scratch against the glass pane. So it's the same one as before. It is all clear, so we are good for now. So now we are on to the next round. Leon, now it's on to his turn. He's going to go in here for one action. For his second action, he's going to lock that door because I do remember skimming through the rule book and seeing that it's a good idea to be locking doors behind you because if any other zombies would spawn in here, they can't get through the locked door because it's locked. So that was two actions. And he is going to go three. Actually, no, you can move diagonally too as well. You just can't move diagonally if it's a corner. So that's going to be three actions. Now, because where this barrier is here, he technically can't do that, like go this way because it is a corner and he can't move that. He wants to go to pick that up. So he too, for his fourth action, is going there. 
Now, for the reaction phase for the walkers or the zombies, there's nothing they can do because there's nobody on the same tile or linking tile with an open door. So that ends Leon's turn and we're back on to Claire. Okay, Claire, what are you doing? What are you gonna do? You already opened, the, oh, you didn't open the door. That's right. So for her first action, she is going to open the door. You can see there is a run, uh, a runner, cheese, a zombie right here. So because she did that, now she's leaving this door open. So she's kind of, oh, this, this is hard because the zombies can come out and she don't really want that. She's gonna have to go in and probably press her luck to try to kill that zombie. But if she goes in and leave that door open, there's no other zombies that are gonna come in right now because there's none on her tile or linking tile except for this that be able to move, but she's gonna be in the same room. So I think that's what Claire's gonna do. He's just going to move in, but I'm gonna double check the rule book for something before I decide, yes, that's what I'm gonna do. I was just checking to see if by opening a door it creates noise, but I couldn't find anything into the rule book about that. It just says that in action she can open and close the door. So that was the first action. Second action, she's moving in is two. Now, is she gonna try to shoot? And then after shoot, she's going to lock the door. She's gonna lock the door first and then shoot. Oh, this is a tough one. Hmm, but Claire's, she seemed to be a pretty good crack shot and she could do a head shot. So do you know what? Third action, she's locking that door up again so nobody can pass through it. Now, for her fourth, fourth and final action, she is going to use her handgun and she is going to try to shoot that zombie in the head. Now, Claire has 13 bullets left, so I'm thinking she's gonna actually use her three and go down to 10 so that she gets three blue die to try to shoot that zombie in the head and end its second life, so to speak. But the zombies are dead and uh, it's a long discussion about them. Anyhow, that's what she's gonna do. Let's go to the rolling box and see if she's gonna actually destroy that zombie. Three blue die. Come on, baby. You can do it. Oh, so dead. So, so dead. Two successful headshots just Pew, pew, pew! That's what she did. The first one just whizzed by the zombie. Maybe the zombie kind of caught, caught clear scent and started walking towards you. Those zombies, they could be fast, they could be slow. Maybe the zombie was a little faster than normal, extra hungry, you know, that sort of thing, and ran at Claire. But Claire just fired the three shots and got two headshots, just bam, like that, and just kills the zombie. Kabloom! There, that zombie is gone too as well. That's three successful hits. Two for Claire and one for Leon. They're doing pretty good, I have to say. Now, because she shot, it is reaction time. But as you can tell, there is no zombies anywhere. I'm just zooming out. That can react to this. And the reason why is because the doors are all locked. So this door is still locked. Never touch it. She managed to lock that door first, but there was nothing there anyhow to be able to. And there's a door here that is locked. It is a link, but there's a wall. So there's nothing really that, you know, the zombies can do except just stand there. It's like, oh, I heard something, but I don't know where it's from. <laughs> Brains. So we're on to the tension phase. So far, so good for our two heroes. So now it is time to draw another tension card. Hopefully it's gonna be all clear truth because there's a lot of all clear. It does say in the book that primarily the most cards that are in here is all clear. So it is ah, another all clear and ooh, this says something different onto it. Your footsteps echo ominously over the ground before the sound is shallowed by the shadows. Ooh, so nothing happens. All clear, baby. Let's continue on with the next round. For Leon, it's pretty clear what he's doing. Ha, uh, pretty clear. Ha, uh, ha, uh, no pun intended. Four actions, one, two, three. Whoops, and he's picking up. Again, this here is another A 
equipment, so I'm just gonna pick it up off camera because I don't have to keep moving the cameras around. Ooh, he got, this here is handgun bullets. I'll read it off camera here, it says discard, discard to increase this character's ammunition dial for a handgun. Custom handguns are Colts, SSA, by eight points. He's not going to use that yet because he's at 11 right now. And you know, he's just, he wants to conserve it in case he gets too low and he gets stuck into a zombie situation that he needs to reload. So he's just holding on to that. So that is his four actions. And again, no doors are open anywhere here. So none of these uh, zombies can move because they're just, there's no open doors. One thing I'm noticing that is coming up here, I just had to double check the rule book again because I feel like the, the zombies should still be able to move on their turn because they do have a movement of one. But the only thing is though, is I just had to double check and double check and that is as long as these doors are closed and there's no, uh, even if there's zombies in like this here hallway, which this guy is, and if there was any in here too as well, if the doors are closed, the zombies don't move their one speed. But if the door is open, then the zombies would definitely be able to move. So the moral of this story or the moral of this point or the point of this point, whatever you want to say it, of this game is I'm learning is that you need to make sure you close your doors all the time. When I played Resident Evil 2, the video game, I darn well made sure about these doors and checked around the doors and everything else because I didn't want any zombies jumping out and attacking me. So because of that, it's become more of a safer environment for now. That is good. So let's continue on. On to Claire's turn. Claire has her four actions. What is she going to do? Hmm, good question. Claire is going to go one. Her second action is opening the door. Two, third action is going to close the door. I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna keep this door open for Leon, but no way. You gotta make sure you close the door. And for her fourth action, she's staying where she is because there's a zombie spawn point right here. And when we do the tension deck, if one says that a zombie spawns to the closest character, she's gonna be in trouble because she'll be on the same spot. At least she's one spot away. So I am staying there and we are on to the tension phase again. Let's see if it's still all clear. If there's a lot of all clear cards in here. Oh, oh it does say something new though. It does say, fresh air fills your nostrils. Fresh air fills your nostrils, casting aside the sickly scent of blood, at least for the moment. I had to bring it up because, you know, there's a little glare on the car. Just like there's a glare when I ever play the games. I have to try to figure out some other way to adjust this lighting so it don't glare as much. Now, if anybody, I'll, any of the viewers out there have any ideas on how I can fix the glare, by all means, please comment over there and let me know. Just to let you know, for the glare, I'm just picking up the camera. I'm gonna show you the way that I got the light set up. They are inset into the thrushes, thrusses of the roof. So because of that, you know, I was thinking on covering them over with, you know, like some parchment paper to make kind of like a soft box or what have you to see. I didn't get to it yet. I'm gonna try it to see if that will cut down but keep the lights bright enough for the camera. If anybody has any ideas or thoughts about how I can rectify this situation to help cut down on the glare, please, please comment down below and let me know. On the Leon's turn, what is Leon going to do? Well, it's pretty simple. He's going to go one, two, three to open the door hmm now because he moved three should he go out in the hallway for four or should he just wait there and hopefully you know a zombie's going to well that zombie will move up for one i don't know what he should do here should he step out or should he see i don't know 
I, I, I'm not sure. You know what? The heck with it. Leon's like, yeah. Oh, look, there's a zombie. I'm going to shoot him. But he can't shoot him now because that is his fourth action. And he can't even lock the door behind him. I'm already breaking my number one cardinal rule about doors. What is wrong with me? All right. We have to do the reaction shots now, or the reaction phase for the zombies. Leon always seems to be getting in, himself into some trouble here. Now, he put himself in harm's way, but I knew this. I just wanted to do this to demonstrate the game again. Haha, <laughs> you're probably saying, yeah, yeah, right, you messed up. You know you messed up. In either case, the zombies had the suicide lunge. So, for the reaction for the zombie, he's going to move one. And now he has a range of one to do the, uh, the swipe or bite to attack. So Leon is going to be able to try to do a dodge again or evade with the two blue die. And hopefully he's going to be able to successfully dodge away from that zombie. Two blue die. Come on, Leon. You can move it. Oh, yeah. He, he just, he's like a ninja. He's like, Wah! and he moved it away. That was pretty loud, but you get my drift. On to Claire's turn now. So Claire is going to go one, open the door for two actions, go in the door for three actions. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy. And that is, this walker, remember, has the lunge ability so, but the walker can just move one and then be in Claire's space and attack her from there. Oh, Claire, what are you going to do? Because you were here, that's one, two, three actions. You got one more action left. No matter where you are, you are definitely lining yourself up to get attacked. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Claire, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Are you going to try to attack? Or are you going to try to close the door? Ah, she's gonna shoot. Why not? Claire decided to use her rapid fire on her gun, her handgun. So three blue dice. She has to hopefully get a double so that she can just hit him and kill him. Nope. No double, but she gets one, so gets to push the zombie one space away. So that's not too bad. The zombie gets pushed one away, just like that. Now that was Claire's fourth action, and then we're on to the reaction part of her turn. So therefore, this walker is going to be able, or walker, this zombie is going to be able to still do the lunge. Silly. Silly Claire, so... It goes like this, and it was going to do the lunge attack. So Claire has the evade of two, as well as what Leon does. So let's roll the two blue die to see if she successfully evades or does take a hit. When I say take a hit, I mean take a bite. So two to evade. Come on, Claire. Oh, evade all day. Claire just is like, phew, she ducks while the zombie swings its arm out wildly in the air. Claire's like, yeah, you can't touch me. Nothing but air there. Nothing but air there. Now we're on to the tension phase. Tension phase, another tension card, and it is going to be another all clear. I did shuffle these. Like I said, they say not to shuffle them, but I did make the mistake of shuffling. So maybe that's just making the game easier. I don't know. But a flickering light above dispels the calm for but a moment before returning to the strong, steady glare. And that's it. So Claire got a glare. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. All right, Leon, baby, what are you doing? That door is still unlocked. It is open and you have a zombie that is, you know, so close to you. Are you going to shoot? Are you going to try to stab him? Because you were successful last time by doing that. Or are you going to go back into the room? Hmm. The choices. The choices. The choices. What are you going to do, Leon? Pick something. Well, no, Leon wouldn't talk like that. He's a really cool, tough guy. Like, yeah. Um, Leon has 11 ammunition left, but he has that handgun. 
So I think Leon's is gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna shoot you in the head, zombie, and you're going to go down in a riddle of bullets. So let's go and see if he's successful. And he's gonna use his three shots again. Here goes. Come on, Leon. You know, like, do what they did in uh, Survival of the Dead by George Romero. Uh, you know, he, he wet the, the sight of the gun. No, it wasn't Survival of the Dead. Or was it Survival of the Dead? Land of the Dead, that's what it was. You know, the guy was a pot shot. He, he licked, wet his fingers and then touched the sights. So therefore the light just glared off it just a bit so he can get a, a better accurate shot. So that's what Leon did. Let's see if it's gonna work. Well, it worked and didn't work. Cause he's got two pushes. So therefore, the walker, the zombie, is going to be pushed back not one, but two spaces because of that hit. So, poof, shoots. That is going to be one, two, just like that. Still there, but he's pushed back so it's a little safer. And that, for Leon, he's got more actions. Leon for his next action, his second action, he's locking that door again because he knows what's, what can happen. You always make sure you close and lock doors, especially in a zombie apocalyptic world. So that's the second action. His third action, I think he's gonna try to shoot again at that because it is line of sight, don't matter how many squares, as long as there's nothing interrupting, he's gonna shoot again. So he's gonna drop his ammo down yet one more time. So he's going down to Seven. This is very dangerous though for Leon because he's running out of ammunition. But however, he has the uh, handgun bullets so that he can reload his gun, which he's probably gonna have to do very soon. So he's gonna try to shoot for the one shot into that zombie. Let's go, Leon. You can do it this time. I know you can. Oh, look at that! Kablam! That's it. That zombie goes down. He is done. Leon, start licking your sights more often, baby. Actually, you did lick the sights this time, so stop licking your gun. It's a very dangerous thing to do. That zombie is pew, gone, just like that. Good job. Good job, Leon, I have to say. Now, on top of that, because he shot, that was his, uh, I think that was his third action, not his fourth action. I'm gonna have to double check, but I think it is his third action. I was correct, it was his third action for shooting. I'm starting to get brought into the game more. I'm starting to get sucked into this, this world of Resident Evil 2. And when that happens, I play more of the game because I enjoy it so much. Anyhow, so for his fourth and final action, Leon is just going to go, go up there. Now he's kind of playing with trouble because he's on a zombie spawn there. They may be zombies that are gonna be coming out for the tension phase. We will see, we will see. But right now, that's what he's doing. That ends his turn. Now it's on to the reaction phase for the zombies. But as you can see, all the doors are nice and tight. There's no other zombies that are in linking tiles in the same tile, so nothing happens. Now we're on to Claire's turn. Claire, you have a zombie that is right there. I'm assuming you're going to shoot. Now, you have to realize this though, is that if she's going to shoot, she's gonna use more ammunition and she still has to go through this room right here that has another zombie because the entrance to the police department is right there. So Claire has a couple of things that she has to think about. Should she try to shoot again? Or should she try her luck in using the knife to try to sink that knife into the skull of that zombie? Do you know what? Claire is gonna try that. She's going to try to sink that knife, but, but before I do that, oh, oh, God. We also have another 
equipment thing here that she can do. She has choices because she's not in zombie. She's not locked in combat. She could go one, two, three, and then four. Hmm. I'm thinking that's what she's going to do. Do you know what? Yeah, that's what Claire's going to do. So, because she may get something good here. So Claire's going one, two, and then grab this one. Now, one thing is just kind of popped in my mind right now is, do you have to be in the same square to pick up this? like I've been doing, or can you be in an adjacent one? Because if that's the case, that's going to save one of her actions. I got to double check onto that. I double checked it, and I was playing it correctly, and that is, you have to be in the same square. You can't be adjacent and be able to pick it up. But Claire did pick it up, and so she gets it. Now she has one more action left, but it's a equipment A. There's one left in the equipment right here, and that is another green herb. Ooh, Claire is kind of lucky. So Claire now has two green herbs, her first aid spray, a knife and handgun. So she's doing pretty good. <laughs> so for her fourth and final action, because she has her knife and it is a one range and this zombie is one away. She is going to use her one blue die to hopefully try to sink that knife blade into the zombie skull. All right, Claire, you can do this. You know, Leon did it, why can't you do it? So we're looking for that symbol. That symbol and that symbol alone. Come on, Claire. Oh, no. She got one, but she did that. She's able to push the zombie back one space which isn't bad. Oh, she left the door open too. Claire, what is wrong with you? She swings. She did manage to cut the zombie, but not enough to kill him. So he uh, going back there. That is it. So now it is on to the reaction phase for Claire's turn. Now, we all know what that zombie, the zombies are capable of because they already did it twice to poor Leon. So that zombie's going over one, and then the zombie's going to use the lunge ability, the suicide lunge, to swing at poor Claire and see if he connects. I just noticed something on the zombie card. I've been playing this suicide lunge wrong. Now, I was reading this part, which is telling me what happens this is the profile for the zombie, the zombie suicide lunge, but into the, this action part here. It tells me, this attack cannot be evaded. After resolving the attack, the zombie is killed. So therefore, that's why it's called a suicide lunge, because the zombie is sacrificing himself to hit the, uh, the character, and the character can't evade it because the zombie is coming in, and it, that, that's just it. There's no evading it. But that zombie is dead. So because that happens, that zombie is going to go away, but Claire does take a wound. Again, I am rectifying it. I'm not going back and rectifying Leon's two ones because it's too far ahead in the game. But just be aware that for the suicide lunge, this is exactly what happened. Sorry about that, everybody. Again, I said at the first of it, I will probably be making some rules mistakes. This is a rules mistakes that I caught myself. So therefore, Claire gets hit. So Claire is still in the green, but she's not fine anymore. And this zombie is Kabuto, because that means the zombie jumped in to attack Claire. Claire managed to hit it in the head with the knife or decapitate it in either case, or disrupt the spinal column to stop the brain. And, but Claire did suffer for doing that. And that's not good. Since there was no other linking tile that any zombies were in to Claire, we don't have to do any reaction phase for that, but we still have to do the tension phase now, the tension card. So let's see what the heck this one's gonna be. Is it gonna be another all clear or is it gonna be something bad? It's all clear. Woo, another one. Oh, and it tells me. A howl in the distance breaks the silence. A long and 
mournful note for the city of ruins. But this is wrong. This is bad because you can see we're going through all these all clears already. So that means that some of them should be coming up. Technically, it should be coming up soon, which is the there's a yellow card and a red card. Yellow is a caution card. It's a little worse than the green. And then red is like, uh oh, you're in trouble. Oh, OK, anyhow, so that is it for the tension phase. We're back on to Leon's turn. Maybe. For Leon now, there's only pretty much one cho one way he can go, and it's this way. Because if he goes in here, he, he's going to go in and fight them two zombies. But he don't know they're in there, he just hears noise, so he knows there's something going on in there. This is a, a better weapon, or it, it's from the B, so, and I do know what the B is because I already set everything out according to the, uh, to the scenario. It is a shotgun. Just to let everybody know because it did tell me what to put in there. It's not a surprise. And it was only the one B card. But Leon has to think, you know, like, I hear noise in there. They could be something good to search. They could be food. They could be something. I don't know. But do I want to risk it when the primary objective is to get to the entrance to the Raccoon Police Department? Leon goes, yeah, you know what? I don't care about what's in there. I'm going. So one, two three, four actions, he's done. And now for the, to resolve it, this is a linking tile, but the door is closed, so they do not do anything. Now we're on to Claire's turn. All right, Claire, where are you going? What are you doing? Well, she has four actions. So she's going one, two, is she gonna stop there? I don't know if she's gonna stop there or not, or should she go more? I'm thinking she's going to go three, four. Again, breaking my cardinal rule of not closing this door, but I do know that when Leon comes here, the door is gonna be already open for him. But that could mean that some zombies, if they spawn, they're gonna be able to get in too as well. And that's gonna be very dangerous. But that, Claire's like, yeah, I'm doing that. That's it, nothing else. Now we are on to the reaction phase for this zombie. The zombie's in the same tile, so it, it's a barrier there so the zombie can't attack, but the zombie is able to move. And it can't move diagonally this way because of the corner, so it can unfortunately not be able to do that. So logically you have to move the zombie the shortest distance possible. Now if he goes here, it's gonna be open. So the zombie don't wanna do that. Even though the zombies aren't smart, but zombies gonna move there to try to make its way to attack poor Claire. But you know what? The zombie can't do the suicide thing because it moves to one thing and then it's able to do it, but you can see it moved to one. There's still a space left. So Claire is still okay. Whew. Now, it's on to the tension phase. Tension phase, my camera's not stopping recording. Tension phase, tension phase, tension, tension, tension phase. Here we go for the tension phase. Let's see if there's another green or if it's a yellow or a red. And it is another green. Very lucky, I have to say. The wind scratches across empty streets. Loose, what? The wind scratches across, and there we go. Sorry about the glare, everybody. Again, it's hard to see with the camera glare, but the wind scratches across the empty streets. Lo loose debris, the only movement in the merciful stillness. Detris, sorry, not debris. Anyhow, that's there. So much glare, again. Please comment down below if you have any ideas on how I can fix this glare. I am going to be putting like the parchment paper, like I said, to see if that works. But before I do that, I would like to see if anybody else gives, gives me any other ideas on how we can do that. Because as you can tell, this glare is starting to get on my nerves and it's getting frustrating on my part because I can't really read the cards. All right. Oh, we're not on Claire's turn. I just got the camera set up to show Claire. Ha <laughs> ha ha. We're actually on to Leon's turn. He's kind of off in the distance there. Let's move the camera just slightly. Okay, so Leon, what are you doing? That door is not open. So he's gonna go 
One, second action, he's opening the door. Third action is going in and for his fourth action because I don't want this door open because that's the only zombies that are left. He's going to close the door for his fourth action. He don't want anybody sneaking up behind him. Mind you, the door down here is still open and that's very scary. But Leon's going to make his way up that way. So now he did that. Now for the reaction phase for the zombies, there's none that can react. However, this tile is linking. Haha. -ha. This is a good example. I'm glad this happened. So this, this is a tile that's linking towards Leon and the door is open. So therefore, this zombie is going to be able to move. So that zombie will go boop, move to one space, just like that. Because he heard some noise, he's like, Ugh. Forgot about Claire and moved to one space because he heard noise coming out of the hallway there because this door is open. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's on the Claire's turn now. Claire has a choice to make now. And that is, does she want to go one, two, open the door, three, and leave. When I say leave, I mean enter the uh, Raccoon City Police Department. Or does she want to try to take out this zombie because she knows that Leon is not far behind her? Because she heard the noise. She can't see Leon. There's no line of sight here. But what she can do, though, is she did hear some scuffling and some noise. So she could be another walker or a zombie or it could be her partner, Leon. She don't know. But in either case, she don't want to take any chances. And I think she's just going to try to shoot that zombie. So her actions are going to go one. And again, she can't kind of shoot there because of the barrier. Two, and now she's going to shoot. And her ammunition is at seven right now. So she is going to shoot with three, actually. So six, five. And she's going to shoot. So let's go to the dice rolling box and see if she headshots that zombie or not. This might be a bad decision because that zombie could do the suicide and hit Claire down yet again, but he will die because Claire's going to kill him with the knife because of close proximity. Anyhow, three dice. Oh, Claire is such a crack shot today. She's got it. She's got the two hits just like that. So therefore, that zombie is Ganola. And when I say Ganola, I mean pew, pew, headshot, that, dead, just like that. Oh, Claire, you are good. I mean, really good. And you still have some actions left, so you can escape the door right now if you want to. When I say Claire can escape right now going through the door, she can't actually, because she only has one more action left. And it would take one to open and then one to move, so that would be your fifth action, which she can't do. But she could open the door, but if she opened the door, and the next thing is the tension phase where it could be a card. I don't know what the cards are because I, I don't really know what they are. I never read them. Again, this is my first playthrough. But it could be like, hey, zombies walk in every open door or what have you. So Claire's not going to do her fourth action by opening this. She is staying exactly right there and waiting to see what is going to be coming through the other door, which is open right here. And if it is another zombie, then she's going to be able to move in to try to shoot. So that is clear. Now we're on to the tension deck. So the tension deck, we got to draw another one. Now, there was a reaction phase that I didn't record. And the reason why I didn't record it because there was no zombies in connecting tiles or anything else that they could move. So nothing happened. So now we're on to the tension deck. Maybe it's going to be another green. Maybe it's going to be a red one or a yellow one. It is another green one. This is lucky. All clear. The wind scratches across empty streets. Loose. Detris. It's the same card as before. Loose detris. The only movement in the merciful stillness. I could be saying that word wrong. I don't know. But in either case. Nothing happened because it's all clear. Oh, yeah. And then we're on to Leon's turn again. All right, Leon, what are you doing? I ah, he knows what he's doing. Hey, the door's open. Claire must have been here. 
Let's hopefully see that she's still alive. One, two, three, and four. That ends Leon's turn again. There's nothing for the reaction phase for Leon's turn. So we're on to Claire's turn now. And you can see that Claire now, I'm just gonna move the camera slightly here. Claire can open the door. So Claire's going to go, open the door. It's like, hey, I found the door to the police department. Follow me. That was one action. Two actions, she enters the Raccoon City Police Department. Nothing else can happen. So once, if I did look in the book here that once you leave or hit this objective, you can't go back in to offer assistance to your other teammates. You're good done, that's it. You're just there and cheering them on and supporting them. Like, come on, come on, come on, you can do this, you can do this. And that's what happens. So now we're on to the next tension phase. Hopefully you're gonna get another all clear. Here we go for the tension phase, and it is another all clear. A flickering light, a flickering light above dispels the calm for but a moment before returning to a strong, steady glare. So we already got this one before. It isn't all clear though, so this is a good thing because you know what this means now. What that means is we are on Leon's turn. And from where Leon's turn is here, he goes. One, two, clear open the door for him. Three, and he is done. We successfully finished the first scenario in this campaign that we are playing. Now, because I said that Leon is the primary character, we have to go and fill out the campaign mode track tracker and everything else, but I just want to read in the book about the campaign rules here. So it states, although each scenario can be played as a standalone game, this game mode allows player to play each scenario as part of a narrative campaign, fully immersing themselves in their escape from Raccoon City. When playing in campaign mode, players should play each scenario in order to form a cohesive story arc. Campaign mode forces players to make different decisions, difficult decisions, I should say, that are not experienced as part of the standalone game. But it also rewards players for exploring each scenario, scenario thoroughly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna play a campaign here, everybody, of Resident Evil 2, the board game. Let's continue on our reading. Players are free to pick any character at the start of the campaign, but they cannot change characters once the campaign has begun. So because we decided that we're gonna play the campaign, Leon, I said at the beginning of the video that he is the primary character, so we are going to stick with Leon. And this is solo gameplay, so it's Leon and then any other companions. Like, Claire did really well, but I'm sticking with Leon. Okay, um, what am I gonna see here? Each character begins a campaign with a handgun, which we did, a knife, and a can of first aid spray, which we did. When playing the campaign mode, players ignore the starting equipment section of the scenario brief. So from this point on, whatever equipment we pick up is what we have. We don't have to go through the starting equipment for the scenario briefing. Um, when players successfully complete a scenario in campaign mode, Follow the steps below in order. Characters are permitted to trade items during these steps, but Leon is, play Leon is playing by himself with a little assistance of other characters here and there. So he's not gonna be able to trade, unfortunately. All right, so let's go on. Return each character's handgun ammunition dial to full and increase ammunition, ammunition dial for each other weapons without the icon by three. Ooh, so. Return each character's handgun ammunition dial to full and increase ammunition dial for each other weapon without the general one icon. Remember this icon I showed everybody? It may not be in focus, but it has like more than one person in it. They're all shadows, so that's a, like a generic icon by three. After this is resolved, each character may use any ammunition items in their inventory to further increase weapon ammunition dials by the printed amount. Number two, 
Each character may use recovery items in their inventory to heal by the printed amount. If a character is suffering from the poison condition, flip their health track marker to the standard side. Without resolving their effects, discard any remaining ink, ribbon, scenario items, ammunition items, and recovery items. All right. Um, other than the can of first aid spray. If the total number of first aid spray cans in the character's inventory is lower than the number of characters, the players may allocate one can of first aid spray to a character of their choice. But we're playing the solo mission, so because of that, that just means that, and we didn't even use any anyhow in this first beginning scenario tutorial, so we're all good. I just paused the video there for a second. You really probably can't tell because it's still the same camera angle and just me talking stuff. I'm not gonna read all of this to you because you know, it can get a little boring if you're not interested into it. Or if you're stuck through this video up until this point, you are interested into it. But in either case, all this pretty much the rest of this is saying is following these instructions and other than that, you can't increase your health or your ammunition only by what this is saying right here what to do. Now, if we did fail, then we have two continues that we can use during this campaign. But once you use a continue, you can no longer use it again. So therefore, if we fail the mission, we can use the continue to try to play it again. And if we fail it again, we can use it. Third time we failed, game is over, we're done. And also too is all for any character that dies during this scenario, you can replace it with a different character if you want. But because it is a solo mission, I'm thinking it would probably be more of a continue than, you know, replacing it because you can't do that. That would be cheating. So therefore, but Leon and Claire did successfully finish this going into Raccoon City Police Department. So the next video you're going to see in this is going to be none other than the second scenario. And it may be with both Leon and Claire again, or maybe with just Leon and a new character, or just Leon. I don't know, I have to look in the book. I just don't know. And there you have a Board Game Maniac. So I hope you enjoyed this first play tr play true playthrough on this campaign that we are running for Resident Evil 2 The Board Game by Steamforged Games, and also by Capcom. I am enjoying this. This is a lot of fun. I like it. I really like it so far. And I like the way it, it the simplicity of it, but also the, the skill side of it where you have to really think things through before you just react because you can get into some serious trouble if you don't. So what we do now, just to close this out, is we see Leon, he keeps all of his gear his ammunition for his handgun goes back up. He's still at full health, so he's perfectly fine. But on top of that, the only thing left to do, and I'm not going to do this on, on camera because it's pretty much simple. So write down the scenario. I also write down the character's name. His health is fine. Ammunition track. But that's for his special ammunition. So like if he picked up that shotgun and so on, you'd write that down. But he still starts the next mission at his full 15 bullets for his handgun. Item cards and his notes too as well. I'm going to fill this out off camera so you don't have to watch me fill this out. But again, this is going to just constantly keep track. I printed off a couple of them. But I may just, you know, scenario one is going to be a right in here, scenario two, because they're only going to be one player that I'm going to be using right now for this, because we are playing the solo mission. Whew! And that is it. Hope you enjoyed this, because I really liked it. And if you want to see more videos such as this one, go to our YouTube page, click on the subscribe button, and click on the bell notification icon so that you'll be notified when more videos, battle reports such as this one, becomes available to view. I hope you really enjoyed this. I certainly did. I've not been let down at all. I've been watching this and I've been following this onto the Kickstarter for the Kickstarter campaign for this that Steamforged Games had put out. And I am not disappointed in any way about this game so far. We're gonna see, we're gonna press our luck, or Leon's luck I should say, in the second campaign scenario for this. 
So until next time, Board Game Maniacs, communicate with each other. It is very important, especially if you're fighting against zombies and lickers and everything else, because you don't want to be licked to death, as in killed, or turned to zombie food, or even worse, turned into a zombie. Like, you don't want to do that at all. Whew. And the last thing of all, Board Game Maniacs, and you know what I'm going to say, and that is, be a maniac! Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games, we'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs, be a maniac.